Now, it's a multi-billion pound industry, with celebrities going to great extremes to get the perfect skin. In a world obsessed with stunning celebrities, everyone wants flawless features, whether it's Anne Hathaway's peaches and cream complexion or Kate Winslet's luminous glow. Costly facials using the venom of snakes and bees are favoured by the likes of Gwyneth Paltrow and Danny Minogue, while JLo's reported treatment of choice is a face mask containing human placenta. Halle Berry says she's a big fan of fruit-based exfoliants, while actress Nicole Kidman has admitted to trying Botox. In the UK alone, women spend around £600 million a year on skincare, and three quarters of them say it's the state of their skin, rather than their weight or their hair, that they worry about the most. Well, joining me now is Dale Pinnock, who believes that it's not all about what you actually put on your skin, but the foods that you eat, which can give you that perfect complexion, absolutely. can't it? And actually, you found that out yourself. You're a, you're a medicinal chef, if you like. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so that's basically just combining modern nutritional science yeah. and culinary arts. Of course, and it was personal experience, because you, you suffered a lot from acne, from didn't acne, you? acne, yeah. I was about 10, 11 years old. It was the summer of leaving primary school, going to secondary school. Just broke out. Yeah. Went, so many different specialists had all sorts of lotions and potions and nothing really worked. Mm. It was only by sorting out my diet and lifestyle that right. I actually created the change. That's so. really interesting. And, you know, it happens to everybody because you, we yes. see celebs have breakouts as well. Um, they, you know, we, we can have a wee look here. There we are, I think. <laughs> there we are. There's Cameron Diaz and also Lily Cole quite recently. So, you know, it happens to, to everybody. To everyone, kind of, absolutely. And maybe it is. You know, sometimes we all know sometimes you get a spot because you've maybe been overindulging and, mm. and perhaps you've just got to get yourself sorted out. So we all want to have younger, better-looking yes. skin, don't we? We've got some food here to, mm -hmm. to have a wee look at. This kind of... These kind of foods, what would they help with? Well, this is for helping um, keep the skin looking plump and hydrated. Right. Okay. So foods like sweet potatoes, they're very, very rich in fat-soluble antioxidants okay. like beta-carotene. Mm. Actually helps to protect our collagen from damage, so it keeps right. that nice and supple. Um, vitamin E, a really important nutrient, so that's found in foods like avocados. I love avocados. And helping the skin to retain mm. moisture. Yeah, almonds, fantastic. I can't them, great. And then vitamin C from, like, berries and citrus mm. fruit, that's actually involved in collagen production. Oh, OK, that makes perfect sense, and that's really good. And you can incorporate that into your diet really easily. Yeah, very, very easily. What about this? Yeah, the next part of the picture really is keeping a healthy glow on the skin. And mm. the B vitamins are absolutely vital for that. These are all really, really rich sources. So things like multi-grain breads, uh, brown rice, mushrooms, asparagus. Fantastic. That makes sense as well. And again, it's all healthy yeah, food, it's just healthy, you know, good food. That's non it. Non-processed, really good for you. What about now, the humble onion and the humble leek? Yeah, now, a really that important nutrient for keeping the skin nice and tight mm -hmm. is the mineral sulphur. And that's very rich in all of the allium, so onions, garlic, right. leeks, eggs as well. What that does is actually strengthen the bonds between skin cells. Oh, OK. So it makes the skin much more supple. Oh, that makes sense as well. That's really good. Now, loads of people have been contacting you for Fantastic. help. So many since you knew that Fantastic. you were coming in. We've been inundated. First up, we've got Lauren from Staffordshire. Hi, Lorraine. I suffer from oily skin. I seem to have spent a fortune on cosmetics, but nothing seems to work. I apply my makeup within half an hour. It's shiny again. So if there's anything you can recommend, that would be great. Thank you. Oh, OK. Shiny, shiny, oily skin. What do we yes. do? Well, very often, one of the most... Uh, common causes for consistently oily skin in women is slightly higher than normal levels of androgen hormones. Oh, okay? okay. So things like testosterone. Mm. And there's a lot of evidence to suggest that high levels of insulin in our bodies will actually okay. cause an increased release in those. Right. So the real key is to move towards a low GI diet. Right. OK, so that's choosing foods that are going to release their energy very, very slowly so you mm. don't get blood sugar spikes. Right. Things like whole grains, brown rice, good quality protein sources such as the tuna mm -hmm. and obviously fresh vegetables. And then other nutrients can be useful too. Zinc is a perfect example. Oh, right. Okay. And you, would you take that in food or would you take that food as a first, supplement? Food first, absolutely. Right. So things like prawns, pumpkin ah, seeds, anything right. like that. So really it's better to, to, do, to do it from the food rather than a supplement? Or though, can they work together? Supplements have definitely got yeah. their place, absolutely. Okay. But it always starts with food. Right, you better to do that. Well, next up, we've got Rachel from Manchester. Hi Lorraine, I have eczema. It's really bad on my thumbs. It gets dry, red, itchy and sore and sometimes cracks open. I've also got dry patches on my back. I love going swimming with my daughter, but sometimes I can feel self-conscious. 
So, what do we think? How can well, we help? Well, eczema is yeah. um, it's, it's an inflammatory condition. It's what we call a, a hypersensitivity reaction, where right. the immune system has become sensitised to something okay. and then causes uh, an inflammatory mm. flare-up. Mm. So controlling inflammation with diet is possible. All right, OK. Foods like the oily fish, salmon, mackerel, very, very high in omega-3 fatty acids. Right. These help our body to create its own natural anti-inflammatory compounds. Mm. OK. Then we've got tomatoes and beetroot here. Again, these are very, very high in the fat-soluble antioxidants that we spoke about right. earlier. Helps to control inflammation oh, a little bit. that makes sense, because I had a breakout of eczema. It's driving me nuts. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. really so I should irritating. be doing this? Yeah, lots and lots of omega-3 is the place omega -3, to start. Omega-3, right. And then avoiding things like um, too much vegetable oil. So oh. it's got lots of omega-6 in it. That can actually make inflammation worse. Right. Gotcha. OK. Now, it's, uh, there are many, many conditions. We actually got a lot of people uh, talking about rosacea. Yeah, rosacea is a, a tricky one that, yeah. because we don't fully understand exactly what's causing it and what's right. going on. But there's um, a lot of evidence to suggest that cutting out spicy foods, for example, things that can cause the skin to flush, right. can be helpful. Uh -huh. Then again, there's an inflammatory component to it, so omega-3, right, oily okay. fish, nuts and seeds, really mm. important. It's fascinating. You, you actually do. I mean, you obviously ate yourself healthy, yes, didn't you? you know, absolutely. You, your skin is flawless. I try. <laughs> Gorgeous, absolutely flawless. That's brilliant. Thank you. Very it's a pleasure, absolute Thank pleasure. You. Right, after the break, Martin Lewis.